Hello and welcome back to my second video of the night. Um, before I get into the topic I'm being told about this video, I will be doing a series, you could say, you know, from August this year, which is like, is called, which will be called Frankie's Football Reviews. And it's only just doing like overall season reviews at the end of the season and me just talking about what if United win a trophy or not. I'm just doing individual matches, you know, like obviously doing United matches every weekend. I may be fitting over the weekend, or you know, over weekend football reviews and stuff like that. So I'm just doing overall season review. I don't mind that. I felt I should, I should have done ages ago, but I just, I just, well, I don't know. I just didn't be thought about it. So that's, you know, what I'm going to be saying right there. And I was going to do it on TikTok, but I think I just leave it. Just might as well just do kind of like a series where I'll be saying, oh, you know, um, Frankie's football reviews, brackets of Manchester United. You know, I'll probably do episode one as well as put that down. Do like a series basically so you can hear my opinions on it. I mean, hey, it's not a bad name. I never would have thought of that name otherwise. So, on to the topic at the hand right here. And this is going to be, I'm going to be talking about VAR or VAR and football hypocrisy. Now, let's start with the VAR. For me, I think VAR has caused more wrong decision makings than correct ones because when they were born they were born because they were born to make good judgment you can't say that anymore it's not referees or referees can judge if it's a wrong decision or not you should just be able to tell if something is a is a good decision or something's like a bad challenge or a bad tackle or a handball or not like it's all just like it's like that's almost like you should just rewrite the laws I've seen challenges that VR did not check. There's there's instances where Maguire put like um you know the, the, the board touched Maguire's arm in the Forest game. They should Forest should have had a penalty against us, and that's me being honest. Every like, when Maguire leapt up and it touched his arm, that should have been given as a penalty. And for me, I'm being honest about it because I've seen so much handballs like that that always gets given as a penalty. But for me. You could say that's also a natural position because if he's jumping, his arm's going to be leaping on top of someone like that. And, you know, that's one thing. Another thing is when Jota, in that Tottenham game, when it was like 3-3, three, three, um, was it 3-3 that time it happened? Or was it 3-2? Where a player was going to head the ball and he kicked, he booted his face in, where his whole face was bleeding. And I'm thinking to myself, that, that for me should have been given as a red. I know people say he had the ball and all that stuff, but he was endangering an opponent. I think I've seen another, I think I've seen another match where another challenge like that happened, so similar, and wasn't given as a red. And it's absolutely crazy how they don't be given like that. And I've seen another match where Rashford, was it against Villa or Brentford, where he got pushed, he got pushed to the ground, not given as a penalty. And yeah, you could say, oh, it's contact, or that's, oh, it's contact sport, or it wasn't enough. I get it's not enough. Yeah, some players do make the most of it, and yeah, it's not enough, they can go down. But at least go. To, I think every referee should go to the monitor to check. Every single referee should just go straight to the monitor. That should be a thing now because it feels like the law should just be changed. It's it's absolutely ridiculous where a player is way on side. They they still have to check it and they check it by by the guy's head. It's not to do with the head. It's to do with it if it's slightly ahead of the opponent. It's not to do with the head being on It's not the head is just playing the football. There's so many instances here. It's just. Even that like years ago, we used to see a player that was way on side. It's like that Chelsea versus Liverpool League Cup final match where Chelsea should have been awarded a goal. I think Liverpool should have tried actually. But whereas Chelsea was playing, a Chelsea player was playing to the onside, what happened? They disallowed it for what? Because they were checking his arm. No, you, the, the player's not willing to even forward on the ball. If the player's behind the, the player's behind another player. How can you give that as offside? It doesn't make any sense to me. It's almost like the laws have been rewritten now. VAR has come in and ruined it. Yeah, we need something like VAR, but we need it to make the decisions absolutely accurate. And I, I felt like there should be a time where you should have had a man sent off, or we should have had a goal this year. I thought that Fernandez goal against City, I thought that was going to be offside, because the rush was interfering with play. I don't know, there's been, I've seen flags go up for that, and it's quite peculiar, that one. I don't know, I, th I think, I don't think I've seen matches where Arsenal City have been up. I mean, City, I think, sh got away with a few as well. You can't lie about that. But I think it's also the referees 
I, the referee should have no part to play VR's. VR's is a check and stuff. They should tell the referee to look at themselves. You know, that's just my opinion of VAR. It needs a change. There needs to be some more. They need to have ex referees on that. Then they can tell themselves. You know, and it's, it's, it's not just like, oh, because, you know, there's certain, certain teams. It's not an agenda. It's just that they, they need to go spec savers or something because they're just blind to the, these challenges and things that are going in. And the next, the football hypocrisy. And this is one of my favorites I want to talk about. Because we've heard football hypocrisy from so many f different football teams, like fans, like Arsenal fans. And they're saying stuff like, oh, my United, you can't try crap. You know, we've had a better season, though. And all that stuff. Yeah, but what did you win, though? This is what I'm saying. Like, I feel, I've seen videos that who's had the better season, United or Arsenal. It doesn't make any sort of sense. How can you compare those two team seasons together? You just can't compare it. One team's won a trophy, the other team hasn't. Who's progressed more? We've progressed more competing for trophies. Arsenal's competed for the title, yes. But they were eight points ahead. And they they, they were bigging it up, to be honest. They were saying, we're going to win the league with City on no chance. You forget what City have been like over the years. I... People are giving Arsenal so much like support. I, I, I'm not giving them any sympathy. It's not just that they had enough. They bottled it. They bottled it. If you're ahead by eight points with over a month to go of the match, you've bottled it. You, you've, if you had if you had four, five, six draws in a row, or didn't win those five, six games, that is bottling it. You're just giving it to them. I don't care who you are playing against. You should be maintaining that. If you've been doing well most of the season, you can't even maintain that top spot despite being ahead throughout. Then I'm sorry, you're just a bunch of nerves, nervous bottlers. And I still hear Arsenal fans that are making progress. You're not making progress. You've only just competed for one season. And you had a team that had enough to compete for the League Cup and Europa League. Yeah, you could, you probably would have gotten up to like Juve or whatever, but you had enough. And then you say you were focusing on the league. It doesn't work like that. You know, yeah, I would love for United to compete for the league. It would be great for us to see us compete for it. But I'd be happy taking trophies as it comes along. And you could say it's just an egg cup, yeah. It's, yeah, I don't care. I mean, the league cup, I'm not fan of anyway. But I was glad we won something after years and years. And people gave us grief. We were, we were got given grief for finishing in second and social saying, Oh, you, you still play poor football, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but there was something happening. But we, we were poor, we just admitted that we didn't win anything. And that's the, big, the biggest disappointment ever. Do you think it's like Ferguson or Wenger would have had that happen? Like I said, they would be happy with it? No. And they're saying, we're proud of it. Proud of for doing what? You've come second. We were, we were just behind you. I don't know if we were far off. We were behind you. We won something. And we, did, we, we didn't have to play that well. It's the same about what Liverpool fans are saying. We beat you 7 no with this and that. Yeah, but you're still finishing behind us. Our way from, if it wasn't far away from, we'll be further ahead of those teams below us. Liverpool fans are talking as if they've won like the Champions League again this season. Or they've won like a double or treble. They're acting as if that we haven't done anything this year. We made some progress. And yeah, I don't doubt Liverpool become stronger next season. Same with Chelsea. I think we might recruit some good players. It will take us some time. I mean, Liverpool, you can't chat. It took your manager what, four or five years to win his first trophy. It took Ten Hag half a season to win his first trophy. That is a difference. I'm not saying he's a better manager than Klopp, but cut the hypocrisy out. You, Liverpool have a team that should have been competing for the league in this season. They have a clinical goal score like Salah. They have Jota. They have what, Van Dijk. And you finish below us. And yet people still give us stick and grief. For what? Because, oh, we're not, we're not competing in the house because we're a huge club and we should be competing. Liverpool are a huge club. Why didn't they compete for the league this season? What's their excuse? What are you going to blame on? Oh, maybe it's just, you know, we haven't an off day. No, it doesn't matter. Klopp's had trophy this season. You can't compare with the great. You can't compare with the greatest. You can compare with having a good team that perform well. But it's, it's hypocrisy. Like, when Klopp first took over, Liverpool won their tro first trophy before that, 2012. And it took them seven years to win the next. 
it took us what six years to win us this trophy or whatever it was and yet we still get hate for what you know i've seen chelsea and yet chelsea could come back stronger they've had seasons like this i'm pretty sure they won't be bothered about it. i mean it would annoy them but i'm um, they'll be happy to see us i don't want the season to end i want you know, to see what they what, what else they can do and it it annoys me people say well they want people who are clinical because they're meant to be just because a club is huge it doesn't say mean they can't have a downfall i appreciate sure city in the next 10 or 20 years time would would have a downfall probably that liverpool is a huge club as well they're having a they're having a bad season you know and it's normal like liverpool has been seven years 2012 and 2019 that's the gap from one trophy to the other that it took them so it's similar to us we were going to have a period like this i knew we were going to win the trophy in the time. i didn't think it would be this season and people still criticize. I remember when Arsenal finished eight and won the FA Cup under Arteta. Turner could potentially win more trophies this season than Arteta has won in his entire season, the entire time he's managed Arsenal since 2019. It's I'm sorry, but the hypocrisy is hilarious. I I, I really I find it funny. It's embarrassing. We we don't we don't have a proper strike. We only have that Rashford. People can say Marshall and blah, but yeah, but Rashford's been the only clinical striker. And we kept more clean Jesus and despite us having some big away defeats at Brentford, City, Liverpool, Villa. It's massive. But yet, we're still up there with the most clean sheets this season. And from a keeper that is getting old, that we probably might need to sell, I will keep him. And yet we still, we still get in hate because we're a huge club. That's what, that's what, that's what in my opinion, we're bigger than Liverpool because we get so much hate for what? For what? Because we need to compete every single season. No, without that, you could, you gotta remember Ferguson. No one can, could, no one can be up there with him. Pep is probably close to him if he wins the Champions League. City, you know, City, City lost at home to Brentford. Yeah, that's just one of those things. But when we lost home to Brighton, the whole world started going against us and be like, oh my God, that's a disgusting result. How could you? How could you lose to them? What for? But Brighton's proved to be a good outfit. Brighton, but Brentford's the only team that's done the double for City this season. Now City's had defeats too. I think whether they lost at Liverpool as well, which shouldn't be forgotten either. I mean, should be really, but they lost an average United team. Yeah, they have good home form. But still, it's this hypo hypocrisy right there. Arsenal ahead the eight points there. If if that was us, I remember when in 2011, 2012 when we bought in the league drawing a fourth arm to Everton. We were eight points ahead and people said we bottled it. And they were talking all big. I don't think any United fan would. We would we would be very disappointed if we took the same trophy as you know that you could have won for the FA Cup, you had City. Which is why I think probably City will probably win the FA Cup. But if we win it, turn out the zone minds this season. You only you can chat rubbish at all. I think you Arsenal fans are jealous of us because at least we won a trophy by not even performing that well. I was going to rest my case on that one. Look how Chelsea are playing. Do you think if we would, what would you, what would you think would have happened if we finished in Chelsea's position? Do you think people would have said, oh, they might come back next? No, people would have said, well, actually, you're atrocious. It's, hypo it's, hypo it's, it's totally hypocritical. If you're Liverpool, you'd be a 7 0. I'll give you that one because that's historic. That's going to be talked about for ages. But it's going to be talked about in a different manner where you had United finish above you. If you're being a seven, you should be above us. You should be playing. You should be second. You should not be in a position with the type of team that you have. It's an embarrassment for Liverpool to finish below us. We finished nine points ahead. No one has resumed. You know, I just I just have to talk about this because it's been the annoys me the most. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like. Comment below, share with everyone you know, subscribe and hit the bell notification below as I see you in my next video.